there are a lot of visitors that come here. It is a major tourist destination, San Carlos de Bariloche. The architecture around the square here is very, very alpine looking. Beautiful. In pretty much every direction you look around here, big, beautiful, snow-capped mountains. Welcome back, everyone, to Argentina. And today, we are in the beautiful city of Bariloche. And you could be forgiven for mistaking this place for somewhere up in the Alps in Europe because of these beautiful snow-capped mountains, big beautiful glacier la glacial lake. But we're actually in Patagonia, in the southwestern part of Argentina, in San Carlos de Bariloche, which is a very, very interesting small city with a very interesting history and surrounded by a lot of beautiful natural wonder. And today we're going to explore a little bit, so come along. Thanks for clicking on the video. If you want to help out the channel and help it grow, I really would appreciate it. Click on the like button down there, the subscribe button, and the little bell next to it to be notified for when new videos drop. It really helps the channel grow because it's going to help the YouTube algorithm recognize this content and spread it to other YouTube viewers. If you'd like to support the channel monetarily, I would appreciate that as well. You can leave a super thanks by clicking this thanks button here and give a small donation to the channel. I appreciate your support. So back to the video. Enjoy. So Bariloche has a very different history from other cities that we've visited so far here in Argentina. It is located actually much, much closer to Chile than it is to really any other major city in Argentina. In fact, the region here has a lot of history, a lot more history and culture connected to Chile than it does to like Buenos Aires because we're all the way over here in the sort of southwestern part of Argentina. We're very close to the Chilean border and we're very far away from Buenos Aires. And for a long time, this city was not connected in any like meaningful way to Buenos Aires. There was no railroad here until 1934 and there was no like paved highway roads connecting, um, connecting Buenos Aires to Bariloche until like the 1970s. For a long time, this, this place on the beautiful shores here of Lake Nahuel Huapi was very isolated. And to a certain extent, it is kind of isolated today, um, but there are a lot of visitors that come here. It is a major tourist destination, uh, especially in the winters for skiing and other winter sports. About a million tourists from Argentina and other places around the world come here every year, most of them during the winter. And from where we are here on the shores of the lake, we can actually just walk right up this little hill here and be at the Civic Center, the central plaza of the city. So let's walk up there and talk a little bit more about this very, very interesting city. Now, I said at the beginning of the video, you could be mistaken in thinking that this was some sort of a alpine city in Europe, right? In Switzerland or Germany or Austria. And there actually is a very interesting ties in its history to people um, who have descended from those, those regions, alpine regions in Europe. In fact, the city is full name, San Carlos de Bariloche, the Carlos in San Carlos de Bariloche is named after Carlos Viderhold Pivonka. And that guy was one of the uh, first modern settlers here in the region of Bariloche. And when the city was made official in the early 1900s, the government named it officially San Carlos de Bariloche after that guy, 
who settled here in the late 1800s, 1894 or 1895, I think. And he was a German Chilean who had run an import-export business in Chile, um, running, like, importing and exporting um, products from Europe. And he crossed the Andes and set up a big warehouse here and around, like, basically on the shores of the lake right here. And around that is where the modern city of Bariloche developed. Now, of course, long before the late 1800s, when Carlos came here and settled, there were people living here. And in fact, all the way back to the Spanish colonial and pre-colonial era, there were indigenous people living here, but not in any very large numbers. I don't know what these little birds are, but I've been seeing them all over this place. Many of the indigenous people were here as a result of being displaced by Spanish colonial expansion. And the Spanish did explore down here in this region, but they never really created any large settlements here during the colonial era. Uh, the Jesuits, who we know from previous videos, did create a few small settlements here that existed all the way up until 1767 when the Jesuits were expelled by the Spanish crown from all of the Americas. Here in the central square of Bariloche is a statue to Julio Argentino Roca, former president of Argentina. We learned about in a previous video when we visited the Roca Museum in Buenos Aires. As you can also see here, the architecture around the square here is very, very alpine looking. It is designed to look like a little Swiss or Austrian or German alpine village. And that is by design um, when this city was, the modern version of this city was originally envisioned. It was envisioned to be a city for tourism, for um, skiing, vacations, things like that. And this is in the like 19, late 1930s and early 1940s. Because actually this whole area that we're in, um, the lake and the surrounding forests and all the other little lakes, there's like seven little glacial lakes all around here, is all one big national park. And this city is kind of like right in the middle of it. And before the city was developed, there were actually a decent amount of settlers of European descent, mainly from Alpine regions, Switzerland, Germany. Um, but they were, a lot of them were from Chile. So we have like Chile, German Chileans and Swiss Chileans settling here. And actually in later years, in later decades, especially, after World War II, there were a lot of other German settlers who came here. Now, it is necessary to mention that some of those German settlers who settled here after, um, after World War II were Nazis who were fleeing from Germany in an attempt to live out their lives here in South America. And there are some very infamous um, very infamous Nazis who lived in Argentina um, after the war. We've talked about that very briefly in the video that we made about the uh, Jewish temple, the Templo Libertad in Buenos Aires. But probably the most infamous one here in, in, um, in Bariloche was Eric Priebke, who settled here after the war and actually lived here under his actual name for many, many years until in the 90s, I think 1994, he's actually exposed here by Sam Donaldson, the famous American journalist who came here and basically in a television program for the American News, he tracked down Pribke and caught him on the street and started interviewing him on the street and basically revealed that he was here. 
once it was known publicly that he was here, he was um, uh, extradited from the country, from Argentina, and he never returned. You walk away from the uh, central square there, out into the more commercial area of Centro, you can see that some of the uh, architectural style of this sort of like European Alpine style is present in these buildings, but really that's only the case right here around El Centro. And as much as this, um, the city of Bariloche is known for its um, German and Swiss influences, influences from European Alpine region, it really is still Argentina. And if you're here for even just a very brief amount of time, you recognize that like you're still in Argentina. It's very, it's very Argentina, which personally I like because I really like Argentina. And I've been having a great time here. So it's nice to come to a beautiful, beautiful setting like this, but to have like a nice Argentine city in it. So from the commercial area up there, I wanna walk down back towards the shore here of the lake because a few blocks over right here on the lake is a beautiful cathedral, the Catedral de Nuestra Señora de Nahuel Huapi, the Cathedral of Our Lady of Nahuel Huapi. And it's actually built in the same time that uh, the center, the buildings in the center were built in the uh, like 1940s as part of the development of the city here in the National Park by the Argentine government. But it is built in the style of like a, you know, European sort of neo-Gothic um, uh, like a cathedral. I don't know how else to explain it. It has very cool architecture and it's, it's you know, right next to the, uh, right next to the lake in a beautiful little park. If we go down, back down to the shore, and we look down this street here, you can see it right there, the steeple popping up through the trees right there. So let's go over, take a closer look at uh, the cathedral. Maybe we can actually get inside. Hopefully we'll be able to go inside and film a little bit too. Here we are in front of the Catedral de Nuestra, Nuestra Señora de Nahuel Huapi. Beautiful. And like I mentioned, this cathedral, while it looks quite old, it's actually built in like the 1940s, I think. Uh, but still very modern, 20th century construction, built by the government of Argentina along with those buildings in the center and also a pretty famous hotel that's further outside the city called the Hotel Lao Lao. Now I really hope to be able to go see that hotel. Um, I hope to be able to get outside the city and see some of the things that are out uh, a little bit further away out in the beautiful natural wonder of the area here around lake, uh, well all the lakes and around the Bariloche area and hopefully we'll be able to do that but for now let's see if we can get inside this catedral. I don't know if it's open or not. <clears throat> Sculpture out in front of what looks like I imagine a representation of Christ in the manger, the nativity scene. Pretty cool. All right, let's see. I guess we check the door right in front of us first. up tight. That might be not the main entrance. 
There's another door here. Also closed. All right. Maybe those are not the main entrances. Maybe the main entrance is around the corner here. There's a sign. Does this tell us when it's open? I don't know. Oh, here we go. Iron timetable. Uh, we, ah, we are here during the siesta time. We're closed in the middle of the day because we're here at like, I don't know, 15 and it's open at 1600 hours. So, then we can come back here and take a look inside a little bit later. In the meantime, though, it is situated in this beautiful little plaza park with, of course, as you look out, beautiful, beautiful views out in the distance of the lake and the snow-capped mountains. It's one of the cool things about this city. Um, the city, as it, as it goes, you know, up away from the lake, goes uphill. We're actually staying up there. Um, up, up the hill a bit. So as you go south away from the lake, you go up a hill and everywhere you are, like when you're walking on the street, if you just look down a street that's going north, you sort of see, all, you can see all the way down the street to the lake. There's beautiful views of mountains in pretty much every direction you look around here, big beautiful snow-capped mountains. So it's really cool to just be able to like catch a break in between the trees, you know? And just be like looking out at beautiful, beautiful mountains. Very cool. Definitely one of the most beautiful cities that I've been to uh, so far in the entire trip here to, uh, to South America. I mean, really, really beautiful. And like I mentioned, it has like a very, very interesting history and a very sort of strange history, right? A very different history from other cities that we visited in South America and Argentina. And there's some like, I don't know, there's just some crazy stories that have come out of, uh, like that come out of um, Bariloche that I've read about. There's rumored to be a, uh, a sea monster, a Loch Ness monster type sea monster out there in the lake called El Nahuelito. There was out there on an island in the lake, uh, I, uh, let's see, what's the name of the island? Huemul, Huemul Island. You can actually see it from right here. out between those trees, right there, that island, Huemul Island, is a place where, during the Peron era, they built uh, a, a big atomic research facility that is uh, now abandoned. And there was an Austrian scientist, uh, I can't remember his name right now, Richter something? Basically, he had claimed that he had discovered the uh, secret to nuclear fusion and nuclear fusion energy and that he would be able to like reproduce it if he were given a uh, uh, you know a laboratory and so Juan Perón and uh, during his presidency they did just that they built 
a huge laboratory out there. And uh, it didn't actually work. He was not able to uh, reproduce nuclear fission or produce nuclear, uh, nuclear fusion reaction. And actually, after Perón was uh, deposed in a coup, um, Richter was charged with fraud. So it didn't, uh, didn't end up working out for Perón or for Richter in that situation. But it's a very interesting story. Interestingly enough, though, this area around Bariloche is actually known for, uh, for being like a major, major center for atomic and scientific research. You can actually see the island a little bit better from here. Right out there, that little island with the uh, forest, heavily forested island. You can actually see there's like a little dock. I don't know if you can see it right there. Um, that still, like, is still there from, uh, from the days when, when there was a research facility out there. But, like I mentioned, there's actually a couple of, um, like, atomic research facilities in this area. Um, one of them is, uh, INVAP, which I don't know what it stands for, but it's basically out on the road on the way out from the airport on the edge of the city, and it's like a major high-tech research and um, production like campus where they research atomic energy, they produce, and they, they build nuclear reactors, they build satellites, they build all kinds of very, very high-tech stuff out there. There is also the Instituto Balcero, which is out on the outskirts of the city in the other direction, and uh, they actually they do a lot of physics research and things like that. So, Bariloche is known, both historically and today, for being a center of uh, very, very high-tech uh, research in, like, physics and atomic energy and things like that. It's very cool. I mean, it's, it's definitely more Bariloche than a, like, a ski tourism town, although that is what it's known for. There are a million people who come here every year to do just that, for tourism, for skiing, for things like that. And that was what I knew it as before I came. The things that I basically knew about Bariloche before I came here was very popular as a ski tourist town and that uh, former uh, SS commandant or officer, Eric, Eric Priebke, uh, was living here and was found to be living here back in the 90s. So basically I knew <laughs> that like people came here to ski and an infamous Nazi was living here. That's basically it. But as I researched more and more about Bariloche, I discovered, I don't know, just a lot of other cool stuff about it. And I'm very, very excited to be able to be here and be able to um, explore around Bariloche for a couple of weeks. We're not, not here for as long as we are in most cities where we visit. Only gonna be here for a couple of weeks, but I'm gonna try to make um, more than a few videos, maybe hopefully six or seven maybe videos from here in Bariloche. From here on the shore, once again, we take a look out at the beautiful mountain lake. Um, we're gonna be making some good videos here about Bariloche. So, as we walk back towards the uh, center, it's right up there on that hill, I think that's gonna be it for this video, but like I mentioned, like I said, it's really just the opening for our trip here to Bariloche, just a taste of what we're gonna do and see here in Bariloche and in the area around here, around the lake uh, Nahuel Huapi and hopefully you guys will stick around for that because honestly there's a lot of good stuff coming so here in Bariloche we'll see you next time